Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at the Benedict test for sugars and it's one of a series of videos that I'm making on carbohydrates which is ultimately one aspect of the large biological molecules topic that you study at A level. So this video is aimed at uh, A level students. I do have videos on biochemical tests at GCSE but this one's going to be a little bit more in depth. So let's first of all address the word in the title that we've got here saying sugars. Because sugars is quite a general term. It's referring to these two things that I have just put in brackets here. Monosaccharides and disaccharides. Monosaccharides are single monomers that make up carbohydrates. So we're thinking things like glucose, galactose, fructose. So I'm just going to make a note of some of these examples. So monosaccharides, we're thinking glucose. Fructose, I put one more in. Galactose. Disaccharides, however, are when you have two monosaccharides joined together, where you've got a glycosidic bond between two monosaccharides. And I talk about bonding in another video. Disaccharides include things like maltose and lactose. Oh, we'll put another one in there, sucrose also. So when we talk about Benedict's test for sugars, we're really testing for these monosaccharides and disaccharides. Now we split this Benedict's test into two. And first of all, we're going to look for what's called reducing sugars. So the first thing we're going to do is test for the presence of reducing sugars. Now, reducing sugars include all of the monosaccharides that I've named, so glucose, fructose, galactose, but also some of the disaccharides. So maltose and lactose are actually part of the reducing sugar category. So we're going to talk about the test for reducing sugars. So what we want to do is take a sample. So just have a test tube. And here's a sample of a chemical. And we're testing to see whether it is ultimately a reducing sugar. So what we're going to do is add some Benedict's reagent to that, which is blue. So we're going to add, using a little pipette here, we'll just colour it in blue there to represent what we're adding. And it's called Benedict's. reagent. Now it's always good practice to use an excess of Benedict's. The reason being is that it makes sure that all of the sugar would react in this process. So we've got our solution and we're going to add some Benedict's reagent to that. Now we need to heat that. So we're going to take this and then we're going to put it into a water bath that has been brought to the boil. So just a very quick sketch here. Here's our water bath. We have let's put our unknown solution in there. And we want to bring that water bath to the boil and leave that for a couple of minutes like that. Now if the test is positive. If the test is positive, we would get what's called a precipitate. Now that's when you have solid particles suspended within the solution. You get a precipitate forming. So we've taken the sample to be tested. We've had Benedict's reagent that we've put in a water bath. Now I said to the boil, but this would work as well. If I put 70 degrees C, at 70 degrees C, you should still get a similar result. But the key thing is, especially when you're answering exam questions, I put in brackets, is the element of heat. You need to just remember to use to imply that you need to heat this uh, sample up, this sample with the Benedict's. And you get what's called a coloured precipitate. Now the colour of the precipitate changes. It starts blue and it ends up ultimately 
what's called brick red. So we go from blue to what's described as brick red. But there are other colours that you would get. Now, the amount of colour that you see relates to how much reducing sugar you have. So the higher the concentration of reducing sugar, the further the colour change goes. So we start blue, but then what we find is that that precipitate may be green. After green, we get yellow. And after yellow, we get a really lovely orange colour. So the colour of the precipitate tells us how much reducing sugar we have. So if we had a red precipitate form, that's clearly a very high concentration of reducing sugar. If it was green, then it's likely to contain a very low concentration of reducing sugar, but still reducing sugar nevertheless. Now you can do this method, as I've said, to compare the amount of reducing sugar you've got in different solutions. But a more accurate way probably of doing this would be to weigh the precipitate. So if we actually filtered the solution, so if you filter what we have and weigh it, you'd get an actual quantitative amount of the precipitate. And you can say if one solution has a greater weight than another, then you can say that has more reducing sugar. Because at the moment, we're just really using this by eye. We're using a, a subjective judgment, if you like, of the colour of the precipitate. But the key thing is that we go from blue all the way on the spectrum to brick red, and we can get anything in between green, yellow to orange. Now that is the test for a reducing sugar. Now let's look at the test for non-reducing sugars. Now this one is incredibly similar. So let's say you've tested for reducing sugar and it comes back negative. You don't get this colour precipitate. Then you may have a sugar, but a non-reducing sugar. So to test for a non-reducing sugar, like, and at the top, if I highlight sucrose, there's a good example of a non-reducing sugar. What we need to do is break the sucrose down into the monosaccharides first that formed it. So this is what we need to do. So we'll shrink the screen just slightly so to give us a little bit more room to write this in. So what we need to do is take a sample. Take the sample again and we'll just... There's our sample, unknown sample. And we're going to add dilute hydrochloric acid. Now that's really key. So the first thing we're going to do is add to this dilute, and that's really key. Dilute, I'm going to use the chemical symbol HCl, dilute hydrochloric acid. Now once we've done that, we want to then carefully heat it in a water bath that again has been brought to the boil. I'll just put heat in water bath. So the same as above, exactly the same as above, where we've got an asterisk here. So take the unknown sample, dilute in hydrochloric acid and heat in a water bath. Then what we need to do is neutralise it, because, that's, because we've added acid, we need to neutralise that solution. So we're going to neutralise it with something called sodium hydrogen carbonate. So once we've done that, we're going to neutralise... with what's called sodium hydrogen carbonate. And as you can guess, carbonate, so it's going to be an alkaline substance here. Now, once we've done that, we then carry out the Benetics test, as you normally do. So we go back to this part here, where we add Benedict's reagent and we see if we get a coloured precipitate. So if the test is negative, 
the solution stays blue. And that would imply that there is no sugar at all. So there's no reducing sugar, there's no non-reducing sugar. It's just not a sugar solution or sample that we tested. But if upon this second uh, experiment, we do get a coloured precipitate, then that would imply that we did have sugar present. So if it's a reducing sugar, just to recap, we add Benedict's, we heat in a water bath and we get a coloured precipitate. If it's a non-reducing sugar, potentially, we take the sample, we add dilute hydrochloric acid and heat it in a water bath. We neutralise it then with sodium hydrogen carbonate. And then we basically repeat the Benedict's reagent test. We then add Benedict's uh, solution, we put that into the water bath again, and we look for a coloured precipitate. And if we do get a coloured precipitate, then that would show that we did have a non-reducing sugar present. We were able to break down the disaccharide into the monosaccharides that it was formed from, and we were able to positively test for them. So there we have a little bit about the Benedict's test for sugars, monosaccharides and disaccharides using Benedict's reagent. Okay, hope all that helps.